All right, making some progress here. I want to talk about the Torque 2 transmission for a second. Uh, these side frames, like the E7SE, the four bolts on each side of the frame for the transmission are slightly elongated. I believe the number is 0.652 millimeters. Barely, barely any elongation at all. The purpose of that elongation is to allow you to adjust the, the ratios. If you put the bigger spur gear on here to run the four and a half to one, you're gonna have to slide the transmission back slightly to get the proper mesh on the auto rotation gear. Since I'm running the 4.9 stock ratio, I've got the transmission all the way forward, forward meaning towards the nose, uh, in those frames. And so the mesh will be good for 4.9. Just a quick tip there, I'm gonna continue putting frame pieces on. Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the left side motor mount, and I wanted to talk about the motor mounts for a second. Um, these guys are labeled L and R for left and right. It's pretty apparent which one goes which. The left one is going to mount um, with the L so that the, the corner comes back. The edge of it is going to follow the main frame. It's pretty, it's pretty apparent when it's in front of you which one goes where. But they are le labeled left and right. It's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this surface, the surface that actually the motor bolts to. You're going to notice on here, I'm going to pull these out, that there are actually four holes in this. This is again uh, mass, and mass, mass desire to accommodate all the motor options out there. Depending upon the motor mount spacing on your motor, 55, uh, 91, 105, YS120, um, the, the, the two bolts needed uh, will vary. Uh, now I know that on my, y, on my OS105 I'm going to need the top two. Uh, to get the motor lined up, um, play. Look at that. You know, set your get the motor mounts in, set the motor in there, um, and don't. You know, you're just going to line up to whichever holes. Put your clutch in, clutch in the right place. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this bolt in the bottom goes into the bottom plate as well. So I'm going to get the motor mount on, and then we'll be ready to join these two halves together. All right. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably going, Why in the world does he have a cyclic servo on there already? The answer is pretty straightforward. The um, servos I'm using, and I have found this to be true with a lot of servos, but the RJX servos, the wire comes out of the case with a really stiff support here. Because the, the servos are sandwiched between the uh, main, main bearing plates, it's very difficult to get the servo in there without damaging this wire. Um, if you bolt the main frames together first, both main bearing blocks together first. So what I like to do, and this is a really good tip, there's really no reason why you can't do this with every servo make to keep the stress off the wire, but certainly with these RJX, uh, with this nice thick shielding there that won't flex, I mount the cyclic servos, at least the aileron servos, beforehand, and then I put the main bearing blocks on. Just keeps me from having to take it all apart and re-loctite it. It saves stress on the wire. Uh, plus, I know my, my servos are in. Just a little tip for you. Well, there you have it. One side of this puppy is completely is complete. I've got the motor mounts in, the both front cyclic servos. This side's all tightened up. Um, it's not really snug snug. I want to get the other side of this frame on, get it squared, and then I'll snug both sides up completely um, on the bench with it, with, once I make sure the two frame sides are squared to each other. But I wanted to show you, there's just a lot. There's, it's pretty getting close to looking like a helicopter. I'm going to go ahead and get the rubber in the other side of the frame, get the right side back frame, and then the back half of this helicopter main body will be done. All right, guys, uh, rear half of the main frame is done. I've got the bearing blocks in. You're going to notice I've got the main shaft in here. Uh, that's another little trick, a uh, tip I've got for you. <clears throat> Before you tighten up the main moat, the, the three bearing blocks, the lower, and the rears. Put the main shaft in. Make sure you can pull it in and out easily and rotate. It's not binding. Uh, leave that in there while you're tightening these bolts up. Uh, helps keep the block square. Uh, I'll do another square check when I bolt up the fronts. Um, but it's pretty good. Cyclic servos are loctited. All, all the bolts on, on this side are done. Um, I just happen to see one that I on the bottom here that I missed. I'm gonna snug that up real quick. I don't put I put them all in loosely and then I get out I've got a nice angle square 
and I didn't bother filming this and I apologize but I've got a nice angle square that I use to square the frame to my bench before I snuck everything up for the last time just like to make sure it's square uh, sure enough the machine tolerances on Matt's, bolt, Matt's bolts are great it was not, no, no square issues at all um, next I'm going to go ahead and complete the other half of the front piece and when I come back we'll be ready to marry the two halves of the frame together well there you have it the two um, sections of the mainframe are complete the nose section and the rear half are ready to go I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the four bolts on each side of the bearing blocks get these guys bolted together here and uh, when we come back I'll have uh, I'll be ready to talk about test fit in the motor alright guys as you can see I have the two halves of the mainframe married together the motor is test fitted the four motor mount bolts are tight but they're not loctited yet I just want to snug the motor mount up so I can come in here and adjust my shroud the shroud is held to the frame in four places two bolts on each side um, what you're gonna those holes are slotted so what you can do is once the motor is test fitted and snugged up you can set the helicopter upright and then reach in here and move the fan move the fan with your finger and make sure you don't have any clutch rubbing and I'll be darned if I didn't get lucky I'm gonna go ahead and snug these guys up slowly and I'm letting the camera run while I do this I want you to see what I'm doing there's no Loctite on these bolts yet but I'm gonna snug them one at a time as I spin the motor I spin the motor by the clutch just to just to make sure I've got no fan contact spin that around this side So now I've got all four fan sh shroud bolts snug, motor mounts are snug, and I've got no fan interaction at all. I can spin the motor all the way over and the, the shroud is not contacted anywhere. That's as easy as that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to pull all these bolts, on the, the four on the motor and the four on the shroud, one at a time, lock tight, put them back on again as I'm snugging things up, double checking my shroud clearance. But it really is that easy. The, mo the motor just drops in this guy. Uh, the motor fan shroud assembly comes right in through the bottom and it takes two seconds. Um, then basically the mainframe is done. Uh, when I come back, I'll uh, be showing you how the bottom plate goes on. Okay, all done. All four fan shroud bolts, all bolts, all four motor mount bolts, uh, snug and loctited. Uh, I do use red Loctite on the motor mount bolts. Um, that might be overkill, but like you said before, these guys vibrate. Uh, plus, the, the engine crankcase does get warm. Um, the aluminum transfer, the aluminum motor mount is going to transfer heat from the crankcase pretty easily. So I use red Loctite there on the four motor mount bolts just because I don't want them getting warm and backing out. Uh, I did only use blue on the fan shroud. That way, as, as I'm putting this thing together, if I, I notice it shifted a little or maybe... There is, I find a high spot or something when I'm testing, I can move them around pretty easy. Now I'm ready to do the bottom plate. I'm going to go ahead and take my main shaft back out. Now that I know my bolts are all, my bearings are straight, I don't need that right now. I'm going to set this guy up on its end, and hopefully you can see this. The um, bottom plate is held on in a, in a, by a couple of things. There are two bolts which you see me back out now, that go into the bottom of the motor mounts, as well as this one of these extra spacers I told you we had, uh, the one with the, with the cap screws, goes back here. I haven't put this in yet because I like to get it all bolted up. Um, loosely fit this in here, uh, put the bottom plate on, snug up the bolts to the bottom plate, which will hold this, this uh, bearing, this uh, frame spacer square, and then I can snug up the sides of the frame spacer. And then the, the four screw bolts, uh, metric uh, cap screws that hold the uh, skids on, go through the skid plates, through the bottom plate, into the skid mounts, and you end up with a total of six bolts, excuse me, eight bolt uh, metric cap screws holding the bottom plate on. So that it holds the front square, the motor mount square, and the skids all square at the same time. It really is a simple design. Um, while I'm here, I want to talk about it. Um, 
this design is um, de this helicopter is designed for easy maintenance. Um, it's taken a lot to get to this point. You saw me put a lot of things together. When it comes time to pull that motor to maintain it, you really have to pull the skids, which pulls two of the eight screws, pull these other four screws, take the bottom plate off, loosen the fan shroud, loosen the motor mount, and the whole assembly comes out. You can, my pre-production kit, after 20 flights, I pulled it apart, double check things. Um, I uh, even pulled the motor out because I thought I was had a fuel leak. It turned out to be some um, uh, a fuel line split, but I pulled the motor to check the head. I had the motor out, tested, and back in in 15 minutes. The motor on this is, is really easy swap. With a fan shroud being one assembly, uh, maintenance on this guy is a piece of cake. I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera, get this last uh, frame spacer in, get the bottom plate on, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the gas tank. All right, guys, let's talk about the fuel tank. Uh, the gas tank on the end, on the Synergy N7 is a 22-ounce molded plastic tank. Um, the tank is vented for uh, on the sides, so you don't have to fish any um, fuel tubing through the middle of the frame. It's very convenient. Uh, the the um, main clunk grommet is also on the side, so um, makes getting the tank in and out really easy. You don't have to put this in while the frames are separated. Um, the Sinji N5C, N, excuse me, N7 kit does come with stock stainless steel weighted clunk, as well as a short piece of clunk line. I am actually opting to use the OS bubbleless clunk on this helicopter, as well as some of the Dupro neoprene um, clunk line. This stuff is really, really, really super flexible. Um, the clunk line that comes with it is very flexible. Uh, I'm running this clunk line in my pre-production kit, no problems at all. I just had a lot of really good success with the Dupro clunk line. It's just so flexible, lets the clunk drop no problem. Um, it really does work well. The um, clunk line, if you're going to use the stock uh, N7 clunk line, you're going to want your clunk line to be 100 millimeters long. Since I'm using the OS Bubbleless, which is a little bit longer than the, the standard clunk, uh, and also trial and error with previous helicopter, with a previous pre production kit. The, um, the ideal clunk line length for the bubbleless clunk and the fuel magnets, in my opinion, is 90 millimeters. Uh, so that's what I'm going to cut mine to. Uh, the other piece of this kit uh, that, that um, looks scary, but it's really easy, I'm going to show you the trick, is the metal fitting for the vent line. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit here for you. Where's my camera? There it is. All right, so this guy right here, this, is, this um, fitting screws off the top. There's an O-ring gasket. This all has to come up through the inside of the tank, come up through that hole, and then be held on with a nut. That sounds really complicated, but I'm going to make it real easy for you. And bear with me two seconds because my secret weapon has disappeared. There it is. A lot of guys like to use um, solder, a piece of solder line. That works well too. I like using a nice big fat zip tie. The tape it into the zip tie will go up into there and lock in really well. It's not going to fall off. Then you can just go right through the hole of the tank. And because the zip tie is, is not only flexible but strong, you can fish it right up in there. Piece of cake, pull it up snug. Now I am going to put some uh, oil resistant Loctite on those threads. Um, don't use a lot. but I do not want that fitting to come loose in flight. Now that I got that threaded started, I can pull my zip tie out. And then I can hold this with my fingers and snug up that fitting. That simple. Put a little pair of pliers on that, snug it up a little bit, and when, that's, when that Loctite dries, uh, that fitting isn't going anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera, get my bubbleless clunk out, get my fuel, my clunk line out, measured to 90 millimeters, and uh, get the um, clunk installed in the tank. This grommet's pretty straightforward; goes in there. Um, shouldn't need any sealants or lubes. Uh, it goes in pretty easy. Uh, I will put a little bit, and I mean just a little bit, of um, synthetic grease on the end of this. Um, uh, clunk adapter to get to push through the grommet easily uh, but just a very little bit I do not want to risk contaminating the fuel um, 
just a little encouragement there. So when we come back, I'll have my tank ready to install in the frame. There you have it. Fuel tank is finished. Um, grommet is uh, vent tube is in. Main grommet is in. Um, I am going to run this up to my sink real quick and do a pressure test. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this with a piece of tube with a with a plug. I'm going to take the um, the one-way valve from my uh, motor kit um, and pump some air into this and then hold it under the water in my sink just to make sure it's airtight. I don't expect to have any problems. I've never had to seal these, these grommets and I am certain I got that snug. But I do strongly encourage you do a pressure check on your tests. A pressure test on your tanks just to make sure everything's sealing. You don't want to be spraying fuel everywhere. A majority of our motors these days are pumped systems so the tanks are pressurized and the last thing you want is a spring leak and spray fuel everywhere. Um, again just cap off one side. Yeah, the easiest thing to do is to take the one-way valve that comes with your motor, your pumped motor, and um, a little um, syringe. That's all I'm going to use. And uh, push some air in there and then hold it under water and see if it bubbles. Piece of cake. I'm not going to take the camera up to my up to my kitchen. My wife might wonder what I'm doing. Um, but I am going to run a pressure check and when I get back I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, one more tip. Um, now that you've got the bulk of the frame together, everything's tightened up, squared to the desk and snug and Loctite curing, now is a great time to put your anti-rotation bracket on. Um, that goes right here on the front of the um, main bearing blocks. As you can see, you got a clear shot to it now. Once the clutch stack is in there and the gyro tray, you start putting electronics in the nose, it's going to be a little more difficult to get to those bottom bolts. So um, I wouldn't do this before you're sure you got the motor where it needs to be and no interference from the, from the fan shroud. But now that I'm sure that's good and all that's Loctite and curing, I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, anti-rotation bracket on. Just a quick tip. Okay, uh, anti-rotation bracket is on. Fuel tank, no surprise, passed the pressure check, no problem. Um, <laughs> one minor hiccup. The OS-105 in this in this helicopter is not the pumped version. Uh, I got a really good deal on a, on a hyper version. Uh, I'm going to give that a try. I've never run a non-pumped motor before, so I'm gonna now I'm going to take these two birds. and uh, The only difference between the two is going to be that pumped motor difference, so we'll see how that goes. So I had to actually... Um, borrow the one-way uh, valve off my N5C to um, do that pressure check but uh, those of you with pump motors that'll be a piece of cake if you don't have a uh, one-way valve to do that with um, you can just use a syringe and put force air into it and check for bubbles one-way valve just allows you to pump some air in pull the syringe out then dump it underwater see how it goes but the pressure check went well uh, the last thing I'm gonna do tonight is go ahead and get the tank in the frame uh, notice the clutch stack is not in here yet. I'm going to wait and do that until after I've got the main the main gear in, uh, because there is some adjustment of not only squaring the stack to the motor, but also the, the mesh on the gear. Um, and I don't want to try to do that until the main frame until the main gear is ready to go in. So the last thing we're going to do tonight is put the gas tank in. Now, I have heard many different ways to get the gas tank in a helicopter. Uh, I'm going to tell you, the way I like to do, sounds a little gross, but you know what? It works well. I'm going to use a little saliva. I'm actually going to um, basically rub saliva on, this, on these grommets. You could use a lubricant, um, another kind of lubricant. My reservation to using a grease would be it doesn't dry clean. You're going to have, you know, it's a nitro helicopter. They, they smoke. They create dirt, oil. You don't want to have a grease in there, giving that place, a, giving that stuff a place to set up and, and catch. So just nothing more than just licking it a little bit. Nothing, you know, it's kind of gross, and I apologize. I I know it's gross, but a little bit of saliva. We're gonna work the tank in, get it started. I need a little more. Just be careful not to let that grommet roll on you. It does take a little bit of effort. Once it gets started though, it'll go. You have to squeeze the tank around these indentations. Oop. My grommet's slipping. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and uh, get this tank in um, and I'll be right back. Alright, there you go. Uh, again, I apologize for 
suggesting the uh, using sliver if you find that uh, a little too gross to do feel free to try to use a, a lubricant um, just make sure you do something that's going to dry clean I know some guys that use a little bit of um, I actually know a guy who's actually using a multi-surface cleaner it's mostly alcohol based my problem with that is you don't want doing this going to damage the rubber um, saliva just works uh, it dries very clean um, once you get it get it started and get the grommet forced up in the cracks of the frame slides right through just make sure you get it all the way through so that those plastic end st standoffs on the tank are between the frames those are what hold the, the tank from sliding side to side in the frame so those are important to make sure those are centered um, the tank is pr pretty much flush on one side sticks out about a, uh, I don't know, a little more than a quarter of an inch uh, that's the that's because you don't want to have you know, have to have clearance for the pipe on the um, carburetor side the uh, tank does stick out a fair amount um, that's no big deal you know it's that allows you access for the uh, 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 pressure fitting and the clunk line again nothing is routed through the frame on this um, this is a non pumped motor so I'm gonna have a fuel line going through the frame but that's a piece of cake um, like I said before I'm gonna stop there uh, I want to have a chance to um, get this video edited and online tonight uh, so you can see the progress as we go. What's probably going to be, you know, 20, 25 minutes of video. It, it took nearly, nearly three and a half hours of actual work. So it, we're, it, there's a little bit to get here. Uh, it goes together re very quickly in my mind. Um, all that's really left to do, since the sub assemblies are done, put the main gear in, get the clutch stack in, and start mounting electronics. I mean, it doesn't look like it now, but because we put all that work in the first night doing the sub assemblies. The most difficult part left is the setup, and that's my favorite part. So um, go ahead and enter there, and I uh, appreciate you following along. And um, come back tomorrow where I hope to talk about how uh, the electronics all go.